What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18.1 Beta 3 to register developers about two weeks after the release of Beta 2. Now along with this release, Apple also released the third beta for iPadOS 18.1 and macOS Sequoia 15.1. But of course in this video we are focusing on iOS 18.1 Beta 3. So you can see the size came in at almost a gigabyte on on my iPhone 15 Pro. So it came in at 906 megabytes on the dot. And if we go ahead and check out the build number for this new build, let's go to iOS version. The new build number is 22B5034E. So we do have an E at the end of the build number, which indicates we likely have at least a few more betas to go before the final release, which is expected. Now, if we go back and then go down to the modem firmware, that is now 2.20. 0 .00 for the iPhone 15 series. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.1 beta three? And I actually have my main device over here so I can show you the first thing that you will see after installing iOS 18.1 beta three. So you will get this new splash screen here during the setup that talks about Apple intelligence. So it says new ways to express yourself, the start of a new era for Siri and built for privacy. Now, after that, if you tap on continue, we get something new here, and this is summarize notification previews. So it says Apple intelligence can summarize content and direct messages and groups of notifications, making them more succinct and easier to read. So in iOS 18.1 beta one and in beta two, we had notification summaries for mail and for messages, but now with beta three, it will work for all applications. And you can see that we have this little animation right here, and it says that it uses on-device processing to generate summaries. And then we just tap on summarize all notification previews, or you can opt out of this by pressing not now, but I'm going to tap on that. And now you can see we get a new welcome to iPhone little animation there as well that has more of the Apple intelligence style to it. So now when we swipe up, you will notice that your notifications will look a little bit different. So now if you go into your settings and go into the notifications tab, you'll notice that we have a new option for summarize previews. And when you go into there, you have the option, a kind of kill switch to turn on or off summarize notifications on a per app basis, or you do have the main one up here in the top to turn it off completely. Now you'll notice that we have a couple of interesting items here. So it says game center, we have journaling suggestions, screen time and tracking notifications. So all of those are here as well. And they are missing their app icon for some reason. And you'll see that all of my third party applications show up here as well on my main device. And once you receive a notification, you can swipe over on it and tap on options and you can share feedback if the summary looks good or if it's not good. So that's pretty cool. But this next feature is even cooler. And that's because with I iOS 18.1 beta three, we finally have the cleanup feature in photos, which allows you to remove distracting people or objects in the background of a photo. So I have a photo right here and you can see that I'm the subject. However, this lady was walking right behind me and I might want to get rid of that. I might also want to get rid of all of these people sitting down on the stage behind me. So if we tap on the edit button down here, we have a new option for cleanup with a little eraser glyph icon. And if we tap on that, the first time you do it, you will have a little download bar here. We'll have to download, you know, the model onto your device. We'll have to download the feature onto your device. But after that, you will see we have this animation that says tap, brush, or circle what you want to remove pinch to pan and zoom. And you'll notice that we have, you know, the device will automatically detect some objects that you might want to remove from that photo. So thankfully it removed the lady along with her shadows down here. So we can also zoom in to get a little bit more precise. And again, you can either tap if it's already highlighted, you can circle or scrub. So for this example, she's already highlighted. So I'll just tap on that and take a look at the cool animation. It removes it. However, you can see that it also detected that the shadow is still there. So we will tap on the shadow and it's gone. You can see some remnants right there. So we'll just kind of scrub on it and you can see it removes it and it does a very Photoshop generative fill 
like job. Now, if we zoom in on these people behind me, we could just go ahead and tap to remove everything there. And it doesn't look perfect here with, you know, what it created in the background. So we can try to scrub and try to make that a little bit better looking. And that looks a little bit better. So now when we zoom out, it doesn't really stand out as much. Now let's get rid of these people down here as well. So we can tap on them and it will remove these people, or again, we can go ahead and just circle them. So I'm just going to do a circle like so, and it will do its best to remove those people. I find that scrubbing works better than circling. So if it doesn't look good, you can just continue to try to, you know, scrub on top of it until it does a better job. So right here looks a little bit weird. We'll try to correct that. There we go. That looks a lot better. Oh, and we have this little artifact right here. We'll go ahead and fix that up and you can see not perfect. So let's try it again. There we go. That looks a little bit better. So it's not perfect. It is still in beta. And I've noticed that, you know, this works best when the background distractions or people are not directly behind your subject. Like if they're touching your subject's body, it might start removing elements of the subject. So I'll show you an example. Like here's an example where somebody is directly behind me and you can see that we're going to struggle here because it will cut off parts of, you know, my arm. So if I try to remove, you know, that part of his body or like his shoes down here, they're really close to my body. So it's going to start impacting the subject. And you'll be able to tell that even if you try to remove, you know, something from the foreground, it will not let you. And that's because this is meant to remove things from the background. So it's very smart at really realizing what the subject is. That way you can't, you know, mess up your photo in the foreground. But again, you can see that my watch there has been cut off because that person, you know, the distraction in the background was too close to the subject aka my body here and you can see the shoe inside as well if we try to remove that you'll notice that it does a pretty good job but if you you know if you zoom in and you really pixel peep you will be able to tell that it's not perfect now here's a little hidden feature in cleanup so if you want to blur somebody's face if you want to censor somebody's face you can now do that with the built-in photos application using cleanup so all you need to do is circle the person's face only their face and take a look at that it will censor that person's face. That's pretty awesome. And by the way, once you edit a photo with the cleanup feature, when you swipe up, it will show down here that it was modified with cleanup. So that's a new little section there. But as far as any other Apple intelligence features in iOS 18.1 beta 3, I am not seeing them. So we still do not have the image playground or Jinmoji. We also don't have the chat GPT integration just yet. So all of those will be coming at a later date. They are not available in beta three. Also the Siri 2.0, like the smarter Siri is not here yet. That's likely not even coming in 18.1. We've heard in 2025 is when we can expect to see that. You can also now add third party stickers in line and you can mix and match these with emojis. Before you could only use stickers from your own library, the stickers that you created, but now you can use those third party stickers. But as far as anything else goes, aside from Apple intelligence, it's going to be pretty much exactly what we see on iOS 18 beta 8. So if you take a look at the release notes, Apple indicates this once again by saying that you need to see the iOS and iPadOS 18 beta 8 release notes for additional details about new features and of course the resolve issue. So anything included in iOS 18 beta 8 will also likely be here in 18.1 beta 3. So that means that the stability overall should be a lot better here than it was on beta 2 as well. It's still too early to tell for me if it's significantly better than beta 2 or not but so far it does feel smoother than my experience on beta 2 which was just simply not great at all now as far as the geekbench test goes i did run a geekbench test here and we scored a 2782 on the single core and a 6845 on the multi-core now as far as the battery life goes i would not expect battery life to improve greatly here with beta 3 i think that the apple intelligence features just hog up a lot of battery at this point in time so battery life is likely not going to be as good as ios 18 beta 8 but i would expect at least a small improvement from beta two. We got a small improvement from beta one to beta two, and I would expect the same here with beta three. Okay, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is going to be iOS 18.1 beta four, and I would expect that to get released in two weeks. So I do still believe that we are on a two week release schedule because Apple wants to get iOS 18.0 
out and also we're not in a hurry to get 18.1 out to the public so i would say that on the week of september 9th is when we are most likely to see ios 18.1 at beta 4. it could come next week but i think it's more likely on the week of september 9th i've also had people ask me about the public beta for ios 18.1 because we never got a public beta 2 only a public beta 1. so apple should be releasing a public beta for beta 3 but i thought the same for beta 2. so it's really hard to say at this point i think your best bet is just to switch over to the developer beta at this point just so you can have a more stable experience so that is ios 18.1 beta 3. it brings the great cleanup feature to the photos application and of course we can now summarize notifications from all applications and not just the mail and messages applications so expect more apple intelligence features in the coming betas but for now that's where we're sitting so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did i would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on more ios 18.1 coverage but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon